at the people. Uh, as you know, the constitution is very strong on public participation, that the people must have the opportunity to provide their views on that treaty. And thirdly, that the government must prove that this treaty is not is economically making sense, that it is, not, it is the interest is the, to the in economic interest of the country. All these are jurisdictions that, according to the Financial Secrecy Index, are considered to be highly secretive, and signing treaties with these kind of jurisdictions opens the country for tax abuse, tax evasion, and tax avoidance. Uh, companies find ways of structuring their businesses and using this double, using the double provisions in double tax agreement to use these tax events as conduit to in channeling investment into the country and not paying their due taxes in Kenya. And what that does it is that it shifts, number one, it shifts the burden of tax to those that are not able to evade or avoid, creating uh, uh, a very unequal uh, business environment for Kenya's small and medium enterprises that are also struggling, particularly in this era of COVID. An estimate of 16.4 million Kenyans are employed by the informal sector and after the COVID-19 breakout, many people lost their jobs. As a result, they turned their attention to Juakali to fend for their families. Now, they want the government to streamline the sector because it has a potential to grow the Kenyan economy. Andrew Kero has more. According to a report released by the Kenyan National Bureau of Statistics on September 1st, the unemployment rate doubled to 10.4% as compared to 5.2% in March. As many as 1.7 million Kenyans lost jobs, the number of employed individuals in Kenya shrank from 17.8 million to 15.9 million. In this scenario, the informal sector has been the fallback plan for many, a sector that heavily relies on importing goods from other countries and due to the ban on importation, their traders are facing huge losses. The biggest hit sector in, ca in terms of cash flow is the informal economic sector. So cash flow, loss of livelihoods, loss of jobs, little or no business orders at all. Many of the informal economic sector practitioners have dead stock since March. Shortage of raw materials, among others, during the post-COVID-19. The micro, small and medium enterprise businesses contribute close to 98% of all the businesses in the country. Yet still, they are often forgotten, marginalized and ignored. The government of Kenya to provide what we call decent job, which are protected and which are also provided with what we call financial services for them to grow from informal to formal. Specifically, official statistics show that the value of SMS output is estimated at 3.3 billion shillings against a national output of 9.9 .9 billion shillings, representing a contribution of that 3.8% in 2015. And even despite the underwhelming support from the government, further statistics I've shown that most SMS have a lifespan of less than two years. Andrew Carroll, Switch TV. Let us now shift gears to sports.